This morning here, I decided to actually check out the former Air Force base here. Um, I think they call it Lowry, or maybe Lowry. I don't know how they pronounce that, but anyway, it was an Air, Air Force base built around the Second World War, and they used it for a lot of training until almost in the 60s, I believe. And after that, it was just fading away because it was kind of in the downtown area of uh, Denver, actually. And we have this uh, fun, it looks like, a, I don't even know, but it is some kind of rocket here. And underneath here, they sell, I think, ice cream and coffee and stuff like that. And people are lining up. <laughs> My goodness, it's like from a movie, right? But my mission is more serious, of course, because I want to go into the other hangar you see behind this B-52 plane here. I believe this one was built in the 1950s and uh, they had almost 800 of these built. It's unbelievable now when, you, when you're looking at it. It lo looks kind of old. But back in the days, this was really a powerful bomber. And what they do in this hangar number two here right now, I don't really know. But these buildings are very, very big. It's almost too bad the, the base is gone, right? But as you can see, I mean, we are in the middle of a residential area here right now. And this museum here is called Wings Over the Rockies. And I hope you can actually go in there and uh, do some filming. But you never know if they allow me to bring a camera inside. And this is the entrance in. They have a little uh, roundabout here and uh, they actually painted this exactly like these marks they have on these uh, airplanes. At least the, the older style here. I will go in here in about 10 seconds. I just need to uh, check out one thing here. They actually have some info right here. So they say that the B-52 program started in, you know, in the end of the Second World War in 1945-ish. And they built 744 B-52s between 1954 and 1962. Wow. And this plane was delivered to this Air Force base here in 1966. So that's kind of interesting. Massive wheels, absolutely massive. We have a guy in uniform here and he's matching this plane really well. Look at the engines, by the way, they're freaking 10 feet long. It's unbelievable. It's really a nice entrance here. And um, all I need to do here is to open the door. They really have a nice setup in here. They start here with uh, astronauts. And you need to keep in mind that Colorado was like a, a central hub in the, in the past for all kind of early Air Force. 
you also have NORAD, it's up in the mountains here in the Cheyenne mountain. And they have a model here of the uh, space shuttle. We have some uh, astronaut guys here. I'm not trying to go too much into details because I don't really know, but at least I can show you an overview of what, what they have here, which is really nice. I think you can say that most of the stuff they have here is kind of old. So we are looking at history rather than, you know, what people are using today. And this blowout here in the back is pretty big, actually. Can you imagine the thrust? I'm too close, you can't really see, but basically this is the bottom of, of the engine. It's just blowing out fire, kind of like you see down here. They're basically explaining how a rocket engine work or how rockets work. You know, they start with the small ones, a little Vanguard in 19, what is it, 55, Pershing, Atlas, Titan, so on and so on. You might say that radio technology has really changed over the years. The stuff they have here is from the 30s. And we have something from the 40s. And it's, it's hard to believe it was working. It's really hard. But people were very smart in the past and they made it work. In 1945, this was the hottest thing you could ever have in a plane, right? 1945, wow. It's unbelievable. Life has really, really changed. And all the different navigation equipment they had. You know, I'm not even sure what I'm looking at, but you know they had something right and they always found a target. <laughs> now your cell phone can do all this. What is this then? Here we have the lander right the, from, from the Apollo program. And if you look inside, it's just a metal box. This is how they came back to this planet here. It's a little tall, so I can't really see in here, but it's, it's just metal, pure metal, and some wire right there, so they could actually lift it up to, to the ship later on. Would you trust this? I don't know. But it's, uh, it's a fact they actually used that in the, in the past. Here we have some early history of, of uh, airplanes. They have a guy here who was the first one to cross the English Channel here with a plane. And the plane was just basically two wings and a small engine. And I think all that happened in uh, 1909, something like that. And it really took off after that. And we have these airships here, the, the Zeppelin. And they just were not safe, right? So that became obsolete quickly. And in 1913, Igor uh, Sikorsky developed some really big airplane, as you can see here.
And even in the 1800s, they started to experiment with these flying wings, like Batman. People went to the top of a mountain and hopped out, and, and uh, maybe they were gliding a, a few feet. You could also claim that everything started back as early as the 1700s. And they started to experiment with balloons and similar things in, in Europe. And uh, some of these projects uh, were supported by uh, the king, King Louis. And after that, of course, a hundred years passed by and uh, eventually they got some real wings. But, you know, it's kind of interesting to know that people actually had an interest and it was really a big spectacular thing, right? When it happened, people came out from uh, far away just to uh, check it out. I will actually start a little walk uh, in this enormous hangar right here. I have to go down here because all the light is coming in from here, so I need to have that in the back. But this is what you see, and above this door, you have this massive American flag. So let me go down to the opening here and turn around and then show you what I see. I need to find a starting point here. And the first thing I need to show you is how big this building is really inside. And I think maybe I go up here on this side first and then come back and go up on the other side here. So let's just do a slow walk. And of course, don't expect me to know what I'm looking at except we have some cool airplanes here. My favorite is, of course, this massive green airplane, and I actually know what that is. That's a B-1 bomber. I think they call it the B-1 Lancer. And I will show you this one from more of a distance. <laughs> this little plane is so tiny compared to this Lancer here, right? So it's, it's ridiculous. It's amazing they could actually fly. The tail here is, I don't know how many feet up, 25 feet, I mean it's massive, it's just going way up. And we have some, uh, what I think is some kind of tactical bombs. This is definitely a cruise missile, right there. See the US Air Force on the side. We have some uh, double-tailed, looks like a civilian plane. And my favorite, I mean, there are so many favorites here, but my, one of my favorite planes is definitely, definitely this uh, bomber here because they are so massive they are crazy massive I don't even know what that is that looks like some kind of a bomb from the past it's an incredible size but it would definitely fit in here so they are custom built to be inside here and they can go to some enemy land right and just drop these huge bombs this is some kind of steep faucet uh, I'm not sure if it's a plane or a, a rocket car I, I don't know but there's some kind of weird wheel down here you might be able to see that right
I give you some uh, highlights here. And um, actually, the text is too small here. I, ca I can't even read the text here from where I'm standing. But I'm sure you agree. It looks pretty big compared to all the other stuff you have in here. There are so many cool things in here, so it's ridiculous. Oh, there is a sign up there. They say the F-14 Tomcat. Also a pretty big plane, actually. They show you the kind of equipment they needed. All the jackets, gloves, helmets things like that and the intakes are also pretty big so you can imagine the speed of these planes right maybe it's nothing compared to today's airplanes FB 111A Aardvark never heard about that I have no idea what this is Maybe this is the catapult. Yeah, it's just shooting out. Yeah, wow. Okay. And some ordnance this plane was carrying. Here's another one. It's probably, um, yeah, 10 feet long. And a couple of models of uh, more modern airlines here. Frontier, the spirit of the West. I, I, I really hope that's true. Up here in the ceiling, they have several of these massive fans. Because it gets really stuffy in, in here and I'm sweating. They are fixing or setting up one of these displays here. Looks like some giant tank here. But I will go down to the beginning again. Of course, they used propellers in the past and then it became more advanced with uh, jet engines and the plane here is a, is a B-18 bomber built kind of in in the 30s and 40s I believe and what you're looking at here is a copy of the atomic bomb they dropped over Japan I think this was the Hiroshima bomb here. Yes, it was. They say it killed basically 40% of all the people in Hiroshima in, in basically seconds, right? It's pretty big, I would say maybe eight feet long and probably very heavy, full of electronic stuff. They have holes and it was just hanging there. And then they dropped it that morning. They had some problems with the weather actually because they needed some kind of nice weather to, to find a target. And eventually that morning the weather got really nice and they dropped it and the rest is history. I saw somewhere they used this airplane here specifically to chase German uh, submarines during the war. And we had a, a guy sitting in here in the past using the machine gun. It's a funny looking uh, plane though.
and they have some examples of uh, smaller smaller bombs here but you know one of these will actually take out any any submarine or any target anyway we have the classic Willis Jeep here those are really nice but today they are really really tiny I'm guessing they made tens of thousands of these A lot of the stuff you're looking at is basically from the Cold War. And now we are past that. And they, they have gone into all this stealth technology. Everything is invisible these days. And of course, the Vietnam helicopter, the Huey. I love these. Look at that blade. They have two blades. And when it flies, it gives away this very, very characteristic sound, right? And I, I love the way they painted this. This is my all-time favorite helicopter. Very simple, but very good looking, and everybody knows what this is. Everybody. You don't need to be an expert in, you know, military technology, but everybody knows what this is. A piece of art. Definitely. And they are still in use. I mean, there are civilian versions of this used by fire departments and private people now we have uh, some really cool information about this plane here and sometimes they actually double mounted these machine guns the guy was sitting here with two machine guns just shooting like there is no tomorrow can you imagine? And if you have a hundred of these in the air at the same time, that's what I call firepower. And I actually know what this is, because I've seen them out in the Pacific um, on an aircraft carrier. It was actually, I landed one time on the Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier and they had a few of these. This is the Prowler and I think it's retired now but this plane here was used to uh, intercept or, or take out the enemy radar. It's a, it's a chunky little plane but it could really do the job. Here you have it, the EA-6B Prowler. It's old technology, of course. And you know this one wasn't a carrier because they could actually fold the wings, like you see here. They just lift them up after landing because they squeeze in a lot of planes on these carriers. I mean, you can go up to 70, 80, maybe 90 planes of all types. But this is really a, another classic right here the last plane here I will show you is the Phantom another very very famous plane but you know when I'm looking at the plane right now it looks really old too right the F4 Phantom
but my two favorites would be the Huey helicopter here, absolutely my favorite, and the big B1 bomber you see over there. So with that said, looking at the American flag, I hope you had a nice little view here of this place.